Magandang umaga, MPC. Welcome sa ating pre-departure briefing for the uh, President's official visit to Russia. We have Assistant Secretary Maria Amelita Aquino, Assistant Secretary for European Affairs, DFA, and Chief of Presidential Protocol and Presidential Assistant for Foreign Affairs, Robert Bore. Magandang umaga, sir. Magandang umaga. Magandang umaga. Good morning, sir. Asik. Opening statement po. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, our friends from the media. I'm pleased to give you a briefing on the President's visit to Russia. Upon the invitation of President Vladimir Putin for President Rodrigo Duterte to participate in the forum of the Valdai Discussion Club, or I will later on call it as Valdai Forum for short, the President will make a visit to Russia on 1 to 5 October 2019. He will visit the cities of Sochi and Moscow. This will be the second visit of the President to Russia. As you may recall, the President's official visit to Russia in May 2017 was cut short due to the developments in Marawi. Short though that visit was, it provided the momentum for stronger and uh, more engagement between the Philippines and Russia. In Sochi, the President, along with President Putin and other invited leaders, will speak during the plenary session of the Valdai Forum on 3 October. The theme is the world order seen from the East. The Valdai Discussion Club is one of Russia's prominent and respected think tanks and discussion groups. It organizes annually the Valdai Forum where top Russian and international officials as well as policymakers, academics, and journalists are invited. Of course, the highlight of the trip will be the President's bilateral meeting with President Putin where they will discuss the state of our bilateral relations and how both sides can further enhance and expand our cooperation in various areas. They will also exchange views on regional and global developments and other issues. This will be the fourth meeting of the two Presidents. If you will recall, they first met in November 2016 at the sidelines of the APEC Summit in Peru. And uh, after the visit to Russia in May 27, they met again in November 27 at the sidelines of the APEC Summit in Da Nang, Vietnam. President Duterte and President Putin will also witness the exchange of several bilateral agreements covering practical areas of cooperation such as culture, health, basic re research, etc. In Moscow, the President will attend a Philippines-Russia business forum to promote the trade and investment opportunities between our two countries. It will also serve as a venue for networking between Russian and Filipino businessmen. Aside from the visit, the trip will also have a cultural component. The Bayanihan Dance Company and the Philippine Madrigal Singers will showcase before Russian audiences as well as other guests the richness of Philippine culture through our dances and music. Another activity of the President in Moscow is a brief lecture at the Moscow State Institute of International Relations. It is one of the most prestigious and leading institutions in Russia in the area of diplomacy and international affairs. Of course, the President's visit to Russia will not be complete if he did not meet with the Filipino community there, who I understand has been really, really looking forward to the President's visit and to meeting him. This meeting with the Filipino community will cap his visit to Russia. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, uh, Asik Aquino, uh, Sir Robert. Uh, MPC, uh, question? Uh, Pia. Ma'am, could you tell us more about the international forum that the president is set to attend in Sochi? Uh, the Valdai Forum is a, uh, it's the Valdai Discussion Club is one of the most prominent uh, think tanks and, uh, and uh, international uh, discussion club in Russia. And they have uh, invited several guests from different uh, from different countries, and I understand that this is, will also be the first time that they will be inviting leaders to address the plenary session. 
Um, if I may add, uh, it's the first time that the Philippine president has been invited to such a forum. And it's also the first time that uh, the Valdai Forum has decided to um, invite uh, more than one um, leader uh, to the forum. Our understanding is that there will be four or five leaders who were invited to speak uh, during this forum. Uh, we're not at liberty to say that. It's, it's for Valdai to announce. Thank you. None. Pia, any follow up? None. Okay, then. Uh, Tina, mic, please. Thank you. Good morning. What will be the president's, uh, uh, the contents of the president's speech or presentation in this forum, if ever? You can please reveal it. Uh, actually, uh, they were uh, the leaders were asked to. Uh, they can talk of any subject related to the theme, uh, which is uh, the world order scene from the East. Uh, although the, the president's speech, I don't want to, to preempt what he will say, uh, because it's, uh, we did submit our inputs, but uh, the final, uh, I think uh, it will be up to the president to, uh, to, to give his views on uh, the topic, but I don't want to really go into the details because I don't want to preempt him. Yung po bang government's campaign against illegal drugs, his concerns about terrorism, and issues about uh, the West Philippine Sea will be are part of the subjects or topics you submitted to the president? Uh, At I, least general topics or subjects, po, kung pwede lang. Ang ano kasi ho, uh, we give our inputs, but the final text is being, uh, it's the office of the president and that's the final text. So I don't want to speculate what the president will say or will not say. Um, if I may, ma'am, I think uh, it's uh, important to note that uh, Given the um, theme, world order seen from the East, this will be the takeoff point for the president's speech. So he is expected to give um, his um, perspective or vision of uh, the world order uh, as it is uh, emerging right now um, and how this relates to Philippine foreign policy. Of course, uh, we can surmise that the president will uh, uh, include in his statement uh, an explanation of um, his uh, independent foreign policy. And uh, since he will be talking to a uh, specific group, particularly um, intellectuals, academicians, journalists from Russia, then he's expected to also provide an overview of how important um, Philippines-Russia uh, relations are at this point. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, Tina. Uh, MPC, question. Rose, Kaus. Uh, Mike, please. Thank you. Good morning po, Ase. Can you provide us more details about the bilateral agreements to be signed between the two governments? Because I think there are also reports regarding labor agreements, but it was not mentioned earlier. Uh, I don't really want to, at this point to go into the details of the agreements because some of the agreements are still being uh, negotiated and vetted. Uh, I have mentioned health, culture, uh, basic research, but the other agreements, I'm not at a liberty at this point since uh, there are still discussions going on. Pero do we have target about labor agreements to be signed? Uh, it has always been uh, our aim to have an agreement that will uh, provide the legal framework for our Filipinos in Russia. So whether, uh, as I said, it's still under negotiation, but we do want uh, to have an agreement that will uh, give a legal framework for their stay in Russia. But uh, I'm not at liberty to say at this point whether uh, there will be an agreement or not because it's still, there are still discussions going on. Thank you, Asek. Um, again, uh, it's important to note that negotiations are ongoing. And uh, as to what these agreements are going to be, they're going to be uh, announced in due course. And uh, you will be informed accordingly, of course. Thank you. And Rose, may we uh, know then put the updated number of Filipino workers working in Russia? Can, can number I? of Filipinos working in Russia. There are around... Uh, 
6,900 uh, 6, Filipinos. And the, Almost 7,000. And the president will be meeting around how many in his Philcom meeting po? Do we have targets? Uh, there is a target, but he will meet with as many Filipinos as, uh, as he can. Uh, given the numbers, no, we, uh, given the numbers, uh, it's important to also know that uh, this is 7,000 all across Russia, and it's a very, very big country. Uh, so we want uh, as many Filipinos to be there. Uh, as to the target, we don't have that yet, but we want to maximize the time of the president uh, para makadaupang palad niya po ang mga Pilipino na nandudun sa Moscow. He'll be meeting them on the third day of the visit. He's soon. going to meet them on the um, fifth. October 5th. That's right. Thank you, sir. Maraming salamat, uh, Rose Ina. Tapos balik tayo kay Pia. Good morning. As uh, Mr. Borges said earlier, this is the first time that the Philippine president is invited to the Valdai Forum. Did the organizing committee mention their specific reason why they're interested in having the Philippine president there today? Why Thank they you. thought it was about time to um, invite our president for the first um, time? Uh, Thank you. Um, I don't presume to... Um uh, speak for and on behalf of Valdai Forum. No, but uh, what they said was they welcome uh, and they're very excited about the participation of the president. Again, they stressed this was the first time that uh, the Philipp a Philippine president has been invited to uh, address uh, the forum. Are there plans also to secure weapons from the Russian government similar to what the president did when he first visited Russia? Uh, I'm not that... Uh liberty to say that because it's under the remit of the Department of National Defense and I think we defer to them in uh, things as sensitive as what you are asking us. Thank you. Thank you, Ina. Uh, Pia. Ma'am, ano po yung profile ng mga Filipinos living in uh, Russia? Uh, karamihan dun sa mga Filipinos dun, most are women and household service workers majority of the filipinos are are in the service sector but we also have i understand ma'am um, filipinos in the uh, energy industry yes. uh, workers in um, uh, the energy industry follow up uh, pia joyce uh, kahit po wala naman details dun sa agreements, at least may target number ba tayo, range, how many agreements are we expecting to be signed? Uh, I think uh, we're not targeting a number because it, uh, it's actually the quality and what we get from the agreements. You can have one or two agreements, but if it's something that will really be useful for us, you can have 10 agreements that might not mean anything. So we're not really targeting, but we're looking at the agreements that we need and that we can get uh, cooperation from Russia. At least a range, Lampo, more than 10 agreements are we expecting? Less than 10? Again, I, I don't think it's the number that's... Uh, uh, that's significant, as what uh, as the assistant secretary said, it, and, and let me reiterate, it's the quality of uh, the um, uh, the agreements. And uh, at this point, I think she already um, emphasized uh, the uh, the general areas uh, of um, uh, of agreements. So I think that will suffice at this point. Thank you, Joyce. Uh, Donna. Mike. Good morning, sir. Uh, ma uh, may we know who are the who are included in the in the delegation? Thank you, ma'am. Um, it's uh, the official delegation is actually being finalized because we are also negotiating for um, other uh, meetings uh, with the president. But um, at this point, uh, we can of course say that uh, the Secretary of Foreign Affairs will be there. Uh, the Secretary of uh, Finance, Secretary of Trade and Industry, the Secretary of National Defense. Um, and again, depending on the agreements that uh, will be signed, uh, the, uh, uh, the corresponding secretary uh, who's, uh, who handles that portfolio will also be uh, included in the, in the delegation. Uh, 
do we expect? Uh, how many uh, non-government uh, members of the delegation? You mean uh, business? Uh, business or? Uh, that's under the Department of Trade and Industry, but uh, I understand from them, and again, I don't, uh, I don't know the full details. Uh, it's going to be a significant uh, number of Filipino businessmen, uh, business leaders rather, uh, joining the Philippines uh, Russia Business Forum. So how about members of the first family? Uh, at this point, no. Uh, not, not even Ma Ma Miss Anilet? And at this point, no, none. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Tina. Thank you, uh, Donna. Balik na kay Pia. Pia, please. Now, speaking of the business forum, what type of investments are we expecting to get? Thank you. I think we should have um, uh, invited, invited the, the Department of Trade and Industry here. Um, uh, that's, that question should be addressed to the Department of Trade and Industry. Okay. Uh, Ma'am, you said that this is the second time, no? naudlot yung first time. Just curious, meron bang mga activity siya nung, na hindi niya nagawa nung first visit niya na itutuloy niya this time around? I think uh, he was not able to meet the Filipino community, I think, That's the right. first time he was there. That's why the Filipinos are so, uh, are so excited. And I think he was supposed to give a lecture at the Moscow State of uh, International Relations. And is that in the schedule? This it's, time? it's in the schedule, yes. Uh, as a way of background, um, during the uh, first visit of the president, um, the uh, Philippine delegation, uh, the Philippine government, made sure that uh, for that particular visit, uh, the substance of the official visit was attended to. So all of the agreements that were uh, confirmed at that time were signed and that uh, they were exchanged as well. Um, it was uh, Secretary of, then Secretary of Foreign Affairs, um, uh, Alan Peter Cayetano, who handled that. So when it came to the substance of that particular visit, uh, we were able to complete all of that. So uh, at this point, uh, there's another opportunity for the pres president to visit. So he, of course, is going to take uh, the opportunity to visit uh, and uh, meet members of the Filipino community. And again, uh, MGIMO, uh, the uh, premier institute of um, Russia for international relations, uh, is in his schedule. And he will address uh, the members of uh, that community. Thank you. Thank you, Pia. Uh, uh, Pia, go. Okay. Uh, Joseph. Joseph. On behalf of Sandra, who's growing. So the president will have two speaking engagements, no? The one in the Valdai and the Moscow Institute. What's the name again? Moscow, Moscow State Institute, Institute of, International, of International Relations, or MGIMO. This will, this will be when? This will be on the 5th or the 4th. It's on the 5th. Oh, that's a busy day. So. Of October. Phil comment then the address. Wow. All right, so background of the Moscow State Institute for International Relationship, eh, Relations. What's the background of this uh, organization? Hey, it's, 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 a, it's actually a university that trains the future diplomats of Moscow. Okay. And it's one of the most, when it comes to the area of diplomacy and international relations, it's one of the the leading institutions in Russia. Mm -hmm. So, ma'am, siyempre ninyo po pwedeng masabi yung parang subject matter of the speech of the president, no? As, it's as, a, at least as um, far as this one is concerned. To, com to compare the two, no? Uh, the Valdai uh, uh, Discussion Club uh, plenary session has set the theme, world order seen from the East. So the address of the president will be in general terms. Uh, general yung approach niya. Uh, it's how he sees um, um, uh, the world order uh, and basically the relations between states as seen from the Philippine perspective. Uh, we uh, don't have any indication yet of uh, who the other leaders are going to be, but I think that's the, um, uh, the import of uh, inviting different leaders. That's how uh, Valdai saw that. Uh, you but contrast that with MGIMO, it's going to be a more bilateral um, uh, take on relations because he's going to address um, members of the academe that are uh, working uh, on um, uh, bilateral relations. And then um, 
it's also um, expected that we have other students from other universities uh, interested in Philippines um, uh, Russia relations in fact when we went there before we were met by um, Russian students who spoke fluent Filipino mm -hmm. and uh, they said again that they're excited to listen to the president and hear his thoughts about um, Philippines Russia relations ito pong talk niya sa Moscow state um Meron ba yung format ba yan, ma'am? Is the audience will be able to ask the president? Or just speak and then that's it? He will speak. There's um, I, I think there's an opportunity to, to ask questions. But again, it's dependent on the time as well. Uh -huh. Because it's also a busy day. So uh, we'll know when we, when we get there. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Joseph. Pia. Sir, every time we ask the president, or the palace, kung bakit ayaw niyo pumunta sa U.S. despite an invitation from the president is because ayaw niya ng malamig. Pero I understand, malamig ngayon sa Russia. So it seems that whether it's not a factor for President Duterte to decide which country to visit, tama po ba? I think you're again extrapolating. Um, if you also check your, um, uh, your weather um, projections, I think Sochi is actually a little bit warm at this time of the year. Um, and again, the, the president is um, entitled to exercise uh, his decision on which visits are, he is going to undertake. So weather, sir, is not a factor? See? I'm not saying that weather is not a factor. Uh, what we're saying is that the president decides on the import of an outbound visit. And the president uh, considers this is a very important visit, sir. I think all of the visits are important, <coughs> otherwise he would not go. Uh, may we ask, sir, why the president still uh, is not planning to visit the United States? I think you should ask the president, or maybe you should ask the spokesperson, because this is a, uh, um, a uh, pre-departure briefing on the Moscow visit and not about the United States visit. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, PIA. MPC. Question? Okay, Asek Aquino. Curious lang, ma'am, kung merong bang grants or exchange between Moscow Institute and DFA regarding seminars or on international relations. Meron ba tayong relations with Moscow Institute? Yung mga uh, mga diplomats natin. As far as I know, uh, parang wala. Pero I think within, there's a network of uh, diplomatic institute na kasama yung ating FSI. I'm not sure if it's the, the counterpart in Russia is the Moscow Institute of uh, International Relations. Pero there are exchanges. There's a network among the uh, diplomatic institute, Russia and, and ASEAN. Thank you. MPC. Donna, balik tayo kay Donna. Ma'am, can you all give us an overview of uh, Philippine-Russia relations, uh, uh, trade, and uh, everything else? Uh, actually, uh, Philippines-Russia relations has been uh, reinvigorated under the Duterte administration. As I mentioned a while ago, even if the president's first visit to Russia was cut short, that provided the momentum for uh, for deeper engagement with Russia in various areas, in the area of uh, security, in the area of trade, in the area of culture, in the area of science and technology. It's a very, very broad-based relations. And in fact, uh, even in terms of economics, while uh, trade has increased almost 60%, now it's 1.2 billion from from I think it was around 600 million last year, but the balance of trade is still in favor of, of Russia. But uh, with the engagements that we are doing with them, we have a joint commission on uh, economic, uh, we have a platform for economic cooperation, then we're trying to, uh, to gain more uh, economic cooperation with, with, with Russia and in fact, uh, we already have a, a trade, a commercial office in Russia, as well as we opened also our defense, 
Office of the Defense Attaché in Russia. So this is already an indication of our long-term commitment to really engage them in, in these two areas. And in terms of culture, uh, it's also a very rich uh, area for cooperation, as well as in uh, science and technology, because our uh, the, the, the OST have identified the areas that uh, they would want to, uh, the areas of cooperation that they're interested in uh, in doing with Russia. So the relations are really, really uh, going, being intensified, and we have formal platforms. We have uh, consultation mechanisms with uh, the foreign ministry, with, with trade. Uh, there's a cultural working group also. So uh, in the last three years, uh, relations have, have really, uh, have really improved compared to the last grown. 40 years that uh, for for the last 40 years it was not moving it was like stagnant I don't want, maybe if, I don't know if that's the right word but in the last three years you you will see I don't know people who will be joining the delegation how busy the post is because there's a lot of uh, interaction there are there have been port exchanges of port calls for the first time the philippines Philippine navy. navy the tar mb tarlac that's the first time that they made a port call in in russia and there have been a lot of visits also between our department of agriculture also is one area of with very good potential for the philippines uh, it's it's really broad a broad base. Every, it's defense, culture, agriculture, economic, people to people Science exchanges. Also, we we are also encouraging uh, learning of the Russian language, and and as some, somebody mentioned, also exchanges among among diplomats. Maybe that's a, an area that's also a uh, very uh, very interesting and has a lot of potential. But I think it's um, if I may add, lang. Uh, Sir, I think it's uh, it shows you significant uh, development and growth um, in terms of bilateral relations between the Philippines and Russia. And uh, the point of this visit uh, would be to identify key areas of practical cooperation because I think uh, there have there, uh, the framework is already there, uh, but uh, practical cooperation is uh, the area to go so that uh, we can really feel uh, the benefits of the bilateral relations. And again, uh, the Assistant Secretary has informed us, advised us about the, the different areas of practical cooperation that's going to happen. I just wanted to add, ma'am, I think one important area too is to increase um, uh, market access of Filipino products, Philippine products to Russia. Thank you, sir. Uh, Joseph, pagkatapos kay Tina. Okay, Joseph. Sir, naalala ka uh, ma'am. Uh, totoo ba yung ano, visa-free na yung mga Pilipino sa Russia if they want to visit St. Petersburg and Leningrad? Can you provide the mechanics? Uh, I think that was on Facebook, no? Um, uh, we, we don't provide the, the mechanics. Uh, it has to be... Uh, from DFA? No, it has no, to be from, Russia. from Russia. Russia. But would you confirm that there is such a thing? You would have to confirm. We, we will, maybe we, we will confirm, but I think that... It's already in the Russian embassy. If it's, it, it's the Russian embassy that's the confirm Russian that. embassy. It's in their Facebook, so I guess it's. Uh, L let's have but the we, Russian but embassy confirm. We have confirmed. not received, uh, at least the Office of European Affairs, we have not received any advice. Perhaps our office, we can check with our Office of Consular Affairs regarding that. Hindi the e-visa. I mean, e -visa. hindi po natin alam yung ganun ng Russia. I think what ma'am is trying to say is that if it's you want, perfect. please confirm with Russia because it's not for the Philippine government to confirm what the Russian government has done. They should know, but what we're telling you is that confirmation will be from the Russian embassy. Because I'm going to ask the mechanics for Filipinos who want to probably go. You will have yeah, to ask the Russian, Russian embassy. I'm addressing Asek Aquino. Oh. It, it will have to be the Russian embassy because the the visa is a function of of the country where you are going. Sila ho ang magbibigay ng visa, so sa, sila ho ang uh, magbibigay ng mechanics. 
So pag gaganon, ma'am, hindi Kasi natin hindi alam yun. Hindi po natin nalalaman yun, yung ginagawa ng ibang bansa about... Usually, I mean, for example, usually they Filipino, will inform, they will send us an official notification, mm. and perhaps it will be sent to our Office of Consular Affairs, mm. so that uh, our Office of Consular Affairs will then inform our relevant government agencies, I guess, like BI, so that Filipinos that will be having that visa when they go out, Aware sila, Correct. pero uh, I, That's we, exactly at, why I'm at least for European affairs, we have not received the notification. Perhaps they sent it through our Office of Consular Affairs so that other government agencies can be informed. So, so far from your end, no from notification? From our end, so European, uh, I haven't seen that uh, officially transmitted to us. Because as you said, they would have, we would have to inform our relevant agencies. Yes, yes. The idea. That yes. Is why Especially BI. Because kung nasana yung BI na yung, yung dating visa and then there's a new type of visa, uh, governments usually inform uh, the relevant agencies so that there would be no problem when uh, people go out and depart. Hence the question, Asik Bore. Thank you. Thank you, Joseph. Uh, Tina Maralik. Uh, yes, ma'am. Good morning. In relation po dun sa earlier question ni Joseph, um, kasi may lumabas nga po na balita na starting October 1st, Russia will be uh, handing yung parang e-visas to foreigners, but within only St. Petersburg and Leningrad. Um, question po, posible po kaya na pagpunta ni Presidente sa Russia, matakal din po ito? Because as you said earlier, uh, the Philippines and Russia relationship has been reinvi reinvigorated under President Duterte. Para po mas ma enhance pa yung, like yung people to people exchanges and other areas of cooperation. When it comes to the visa thing, and could it be possibly tackled po kaya sa visit ni Presidente sa Russia? Uh, I think, if I, may, okay, I think sige, sige. Any, everything is in the realm of possibility. Naman. The framework is that uh, both governments are trying to um, uh, intensify people-to-people -people cooperation. Uh, but as regards details on that, uh, maybe that's left best to uh, the offices that are concerned. Because, of course, these are... Uh, president speaking. Eh. Normally, when uh, the president speak, they they speak on policy issues, not on technical issues. The the broad policy issue there is that uh, there needs to be greater interaction between our peoples, greater exchange. The technical aspect would be uh, granting of visas. So that's going to undergo its own processes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Prime Minister in MPC. Question number. Of, uh, ambos na lang. <laughs> maraming salamat, MPC. Maraming salamat, Assistant Secretary Maria Amelita Aquino, in Chief of Presidential Protocol and Presidential Assistant for Foreign Affairs, Robert Borre. Balik tayo sa Radio Pilipinas at PTV4.